So tonight, I'm gonna do a little video on taking photos of the crescent moon. I got off of work the other night and I saw the crescent moon and Venus conjunction and I thought it looked awesome. I wanted to shoot it when I got home but it's already sitting in those trees back there by the time I get home from work. So tonight I'm going to image the crescent moon and I'm going to do a or attempt to do a composite Earthshine moon or HDR moon as they're called and I'm just going to go through the process of how I capture that and uh, you can, as you can see spring is officially here I may set up my little rig tonight and try to get a little bit more time in on the last of my winter uh, nebulas around Orion and it's officially galaxy season so figured I would do something different and uh, shoot the moon tonight so let's get to it so I'm gonna be using my Tron Skyguider Pro to track the moon with um, you don't have to have a tracker but it just it keeps it in frame I'm gonna be using uh, quite the long lens the longest lens I have, a 400 millimeter lens. And I've got this um, slick tripod here and the William Optics base for the Sky Guider. And as soon as I can see Polaris, I'm just gonna get a um, pretty good polar alignment and I'm gonna start shooting the moon as soon as it gets dark enough. I just wanted to get a shot of these trees I have to deal with. Uh, Polaris is at the very top of those trees back there in my backyard. And then I have this huge oak tree right here facing the west. And just my whole neighborhood's got humongous trees. And then this one blocks my uh, southern view over here. So I can only shoot stuff that's so high. I think you can see Sirius right there to the, on just on top of that tree. And I'm, I'm, I can start to make out Orion up there. So I still can't see Polaris. So I'm going to uh, wait a few more minutes and then I think, I st yeah, I see it now. It's starting to pop up now. So cool. Let me get this thing polar aligned. I've got Polaris lined up. I've got a little gap in the trees right here. So first thing I'm gonna do is just level this tripod. And it doesn't have to be perfect. I'm just gonna get it close. That looks pretty good right there. Oh, and it's just about time to turn this light on because it's getting dark out here, but I don't wanna affect my uh, night vision because I can just barely see Polaris and I want to go ahead and get this get this going before it gets completely dark. I'm gonna go ahead and put my camera in here on the saddle and I'm just gonna do a rough balance here. And this is the heaviest rig I've run on this I got her and I'm gonna go ahead and aim towards the moon and then I'll just check the balance and make sure it's it's good looks good okay I'm gonna tighten this clutch back down and I'm gonna go ahead and hook this intervalometer up 
while I'm thinking about it. And that's the wrong side. Over here. Uh, well, just the wrong tab. It's been a while since I used my DSLR, if you can't tell. Okay. And then I've got some Velcro on the back of this thing, and I'm just going to stick it right here for now. I'm going to use this app called PS Align Pro. And it looks like they updated. And I just need to see where Polaris is, and it looks like it's right on, on 4 o'clock. So I'm just going to try to... Uh, just going to try to... Line it up around four o'clock, and that should be good enough for what we're doing. So that'll be easy to remember right there. All right, let's get it. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and power this thing on and take the polar scope cap off the back. And I forgot to take this one off. Crap. Okay, so I forgot to take this. Uh, and you can't see this, sorry. I forgot to take this dust plug off that lets you look through the polar scope before I put my counterweight bar on. So, taking on off and now I'm gonna install my counterweight and put the camera back on. I'm kinda rushing through this process because uh, I wanna start imaging on um, the Seagull Nebula is when I get a chance. I mean, this is the last chance I'm gonna get probably because we've got more clouds and rain coming in. And so I'm going to, I've got it level, I've got it balanced, and now I'm going to do a quick polar line, I'm going to aim at the moon. Uh, on my sky guider, I have to turn my counterweight bar configuration like this uh, to get this um, polar scope reticle to light up. I'm going to see if I can get that, you can see that there. And I see Polaris, but it's off to the right a good bit, so I'm going to have to Move this thing a good bit to get it aligned at four o'clock. So I've got this thing polar line. I'm going to loosen the clutch back up. And it's roughly aimed at the moon. And I'll just tighten that clutch back down. And let's get the camera turned on. And let's, let's get the moon in, in frame. And let's get focused up. So I've kind of got this dialed in on the display on the camera. I'm going to take the lens cap off here. And I'm going to go into live view. And I don't see anything yet. So we're going to slew this back a little bit. You should see the moon pop up in the frame here shortly. Now it could be out of focus. That should be good. There it is. Look at that shine. So I'm gonna... It's actually supposed to be lining up with Pleiades tonight and I just want to see if I can get that to show up first because that was something I'm going to try to do I'm going to put it over here in this corner and yep there's Pleiades right there that is really cool wow let me tighten this thing down and I'm going to cut this light off and get some test shots. I don't know if you can see that, I've got the, you can see the natural earth shine just through the uh, display on the back of the camera and Pleiades is to the right. So I'm going to take a few exposures of this and uh, mess with it and see what I can get. That's really cool, the moon and Pleiades. So I'm trying different exposures, um, one second, two second, half second, shorter, longer. I'm just taking a different, a bunch of different exposures and just going to see what looks best as I may actually post this as a uh, single exposure. And since I do have it on a tracker, 
it's uh, lining up perfectly. I'm going to try three seconds. This will probably blow the moon out, but Pleiades should show up really well. That's awesome. That is so cool for a single exposure. So cool. I'll just try five seconds. And then I'll work my way back down. That's so cool. Okay, I'm gonna go back down to about one second. That seemed to be like the sweet spot where you're getting details on the moon and uh, Pleiades is showing up. Cool. So now I'm gonna go over focusing. And what I do is, let me see if this is all showing up. I hope it is. Um, there's a magnifying button right here and the mosquitoes are out. I dialed the exposure back to um, one eight hundredth of a second. And that's usually where I like to shoot my moon photos because uh, a, a trick to moon photography, a, a lot of people overexpose and it's better to underexpose for the moon, in my opinion, and because you can always bump up the exposure in post-processing. So I've got that uh, dialed in. I'm gonna hit this magnifying button. And I've got the box on the moon. I'm gonna hit it again. It's gonna zoom in five times. And then I'm gonna hit it again. And it's gonna zoom in 10 times. And I'm gonna focus this. And that was pretty good right there. I just wanna make sure that those craters are nice and sharp. And that, that looks pretty good. The seeing is pretty bad. I can see it waving. Yeah, the seeing conditions aren't the greatest. It's kind of hot tonight. But uh, that looks pretty good. So I'm going to hit that magnifying button again. And then now I'm going to move the exposure back up to one second. And I didn't realize this until I wanted to record something in my front yard that I've got the loudest damn neighborhood in America, I think. I've got hound dogs trucks kids playing uh, anyways let's try this one second shot again and make sure I'm in focus yeah okay so I bumped the ISO up to 1600 here um, I'm still trying one second exposures that seem to be the sweet spot for this I'm gonna see what this one looks like it's 1600 Pretty good. I'll take a few at 1600. Sorry for the dogs. <laughs> and uh, the mosquitoes are out because I just got bit on my leg. So, yay. Okay, so now I'm gonna get to, uh, I just I just had to do that. I, I framed it up in Sky Safari earlier and I saw that Pleiades was gonna be in the frame in the field of view with this 400 millimeter lens and I just had to try that, so. Uh, I'm going to center the moon now, and uh, hopefully not knock this thing out of uh, alignment. That looks pretty centered. Uh, okay, that's going to be good enough right there. Okay, so first thing I'm going to do is exposed for the, the bright side of the moon itself and not the earth shine part. So I am going to go back into the settings. Uh, I'll probably use ISO 800. I'll just try that. And then I'm gonna go to the exposure. And the sweet spot for me is usually around that 1 800, 1 800 of a second. And I'm going to make sure this thing's not shaking because uh, this is a lot of focal length for this uh, sky guider. 
and any movement around it could could shake it and make a blurry picture so I'm just gonna snap a few of these because I may end up stacking these for the for the bright side of the moon I took about maybe 50 of these uh, I may stack them and then merge it with the uh, Earthshine picture. I'm not sure yet, but I'm just, I'm gonna take a couple more. And just in case, just never know. Okay, I'll call that good. And now I'm gonna go back to the settings and I'm going to go back to about one second and I'll try that first. And I'll probably just take several of these and mess with the exposure time. And see how they look. Because with these exposures, you're exposing for the dark side of the moon and you want that showing up. And that looks pretty good there. I'm actually getting some stars there too. with uh, the exposure let's just try two seconds and see what that looks like getting a little bit of that glow around it and I may just try a five second exposure just to see if we can get a lot of moon glow and we may throw that in there as well Let's just paint some happy little trees right over there. Yeah, that's a lot of glow. And the mosquitoes are back in my face. That's basically the capture process for this when it's a crescent moon, even a half moon. Um, you want to expose for the dark side and then expose for the, the bright side. And you'll underexpose for the bright side and then you'll overexpose for the dark side. So... Just take one more and that's it I've got enough and I can uh, put these into uh, Photoshop and merge them together and I'll be doing that in the next video so that's basically the capture process for doing an HDR or Earthshine Moon um, you'll take those two exposures and you'll blend them in something like Photoshop or GIMP and I'm going to make a video on how to do that, but I just wanted to cover uh, the capturing process tonight. So, um, sorry about all the noise, sorry about the dogs, sorry about the trucks going by, sorry about the birds chirping. I need to move to the country. Close, guys. <laughs>